Okay, 2015 Prius. It has a code P261B, which is coolant pump performance. This is a Gen 3 Prius, and it has an electric coolant pump on the side of the engine. We're gonna change that pump. Uh, one thing worth noting, if you go ahead and ignore the code and continue to drive, the engine will be ruined. So like any car, if the coolant's not circulating through the engine when it's running, it will overheat and either blow the head gasket or cause other internal damage. Okay, so we're gonna take this air box out of the way and the coolant pump is directly below that. As usual, a lot of 10 millimeter bolts on the Toyota. So I just push this little finger down and then I can remove the air box. Okay. Hose around it. There we go. Okay, so we're already at the water pump. It's really right there and there's only one plug on it. Now I'll go ahead and put a catch pan under the car and I'm gonna loosen these 12 millimeter bolts. There's five 12 millimeter bolts that hold this pump on. As usual, I'm using one tool to break them free and I'm gonna use a different tool to spin them off. So they're on there pretty snug. It's got a long ratchet to make easy work of it. And then I'll switch to a little quarter drive ratchet. Loosen them all up. I got a catch pan under there. This coolant will fall out once I get all these bolts off. There it goes, the coolant's coming out now. As I loosen one of the last bolts. So let's make sure I'm getting it. There we go. Catch pan under there. All right, our pump is loose. Just work it out of there. It's kind of stuck in there a little bit. go so there's nothing to really inspect on this part this actually has a brushless motor in here that spins this impeller so the motor has an integrated integrated controller uh, it's hard to know what went wrong and it really doesn't matter we're just going to replace this whole thing as a unit so I'll grab the new pump this has a really well designed gasket that fits snugly in this groove and has no danger of falling off right when you're installing the pump. So uh, it'll be a pretty easy install, just the opposite of the removal. All right, here's our new pump. I'll go ahead and install this. And in terms of uh, figuring out your torque, you can certainly look up the torques and use a torque wrench. What I like to do is I think about the handle length and with quite a bit of force on this little quarter inch ratchet, I won't be able to get too tight on this. So that's how I'll control the torque. All right, so we just kind of work this guy back in there. It's, it's only one way it can go. There it is. Okay, so there are two long bolts and those go on these two rear positions towards the rear of the car here and the one directly below that. The other three are shorter in case you didn't notice when pulling them out. So I'll just kind of tighten them in sequence. I did go ahead and look up the uh, torque value is 15 foot pounds, but uh, I'm just going to estimate and I'm gonna use my small ratchet handle. Okay, snugging them up one at a time. A little hard to get in there on some of these. I mean, that said, uh, this is much easier water pump than many cars. Okay, so I'll just go ahead and plug the pump in. Click. And I'll go ahead and reinstall the air box. Alright. So I'll go ahead and add the coolant. Okay, since this is a hybrid, the engine stops and it can be very difficult to make the engine warm up without actually driving. Since 
Since we want to get it up to full operating temperature and make sure our coolant level is correct, we're going to use this pedal depressor. So I'll go ahead and depress the gas pedal with the car on in park and it'll continuously run the engine. So, hook the steering wheel. There, now it's gonna run fast idle. And I'll actually let it run for about 20 minutes. In fact, it, it, depending on the weather and other factors, it could take up to 45 minutes for it to really get up to full operating temperature. And I can check that by seeing when the radiator fan comes on. So I'd like it to run until the radiator fan comes on and then I'll know it's full operating temperature and my coolant level is correct. Okay, we got the new pump in, refilled the coolant, uh, got the car up to operating temperature, and then we actually drove around and let it sit for a minute. And frequently at that time, you'll see the coolant will drop a little. And so we added a little more at that point. Uh, it's running fine. Codes are repairs complete and this car is good to go.